Time now for the award-winning number one local talk show in Northeast Pennsylvania, The Sam LaSant Show. Now here's your host, Sam LaSant. Hi, folks. I have uh, Representative Tara Tuhill on the show. I tell you, folks, we're going to try to keep you informed, and I know some of you sometimes think that there's too many politicians coming on the show. Uh, folks, as far as I'm concerned, there's not enough coming on the show to explain what's going on in this crazy world of ours. Uh, we hear so many different things, uh, and um, I always say I think we threw common sense out the door. Uh, Tara has been here uh, on the show a number of times, and she's always been responsive, and I appreciate that very much. Thanks for having me. You are the representative of 116 Pennsylvania Legislative District, correct? Yes, All yes, right. sir. Your buddy Jerry Knowles was on the show, and um, he was explaining what his position on what's happening in the state. I said before, um, I just said, uh, Tara, I, I, I think, you know, and I could be stupid, dumb, which people call me that, uh, common sense today is just being thrown out the door. I think we're letting the do-gooders uh, ruin this country. I think we're letting these people who think, you know, uh, I don't know. I just, I just think we're we're losing a lot. I don't envy you. I don't envy anyone who's in political office today, whether they're Democrat, liberal, conservative, etc. I applaud you guys for doing what you're doing. However. Uh, you know, you're seeing a lot in the state of Pennsylvania. You get bombarded with a lot of things, right? Right. whether it's, whether it's the uh, you know energy, whether it's um, the budget, whether it's the lottery, whether it's a, everyone has their own thing to talk about, and then you have to zoom in to answer those things. So let me just ask you this: What do you think? Okay, are the are the serious priority concerns right now? Well, the big priorities, and I think it's the things that come onto my table, onto my plate the most. Uh, children in Pennsylvania are obviously a huge priority because the life that they're having as a child, the way that they're treated, if they're being abused, the education that they're getting, uh, the, the outreach in the community, it's going to develop them into who they're going to become as adults. And those kids, um, the abused children, the children that don't do well in school, they end up in our correctional facilities. They end up uh, creating crime on the streets. So we really have to uh, deal with our kids and the future that they're having. So I'm very lucky uh, to be on the Children and Youth Committee as well as the Judiciary Committee uh, where we're dealing with a lot of children's issues. And it's unfortunate that it's just in light of the Sandusky scandal uh, that we had a joint task force come together and make a 400-page recommendation as to how we're supposed to be dealing with abuse and neglect of our children in Pennsylvania. But it's a huge issue. Okay, now, staying on that subject matter, okay, the governor, okay, with his budget, um, what is he doing in terms of providing funding for what you're talking about? Well, <coughs> we do have uh, bills that we're putting in, and it's some of it is in the budget, um, but I think it's something that we're going to have to tweak so that there are crisis centers for children that are abused, the children's advocacy centers. Uh, we're trying to have those around the state. Uh, and they're saying that had there been a children's advocacy center in Center County uh, during the Sandusky scandal all those years, that they actually would have been able to catch that this was a problem that was occurring because victims would all be coming to the same place dealing with the same people, and they would have been able to uncover it a lot sooner. Um, on some of the other things are just education funding. I'm going to be looking at this budget. There is about a 3.5% increase for Hazleton area and um, Crestwood area school districts. So those are the two that I represent right now. And I look, I look at those and I'm, I'm trying to make sure, is that funding increase going to be enough? Because at the same time you have that climbing um, pension crisis that's going on with funding the pensions. So regardless of how much money I'm able to garner as a state legislator for those school districts, our school districts still have to keep on raising taxes on the local level to pay for those pensions. So we have a lot of things that we have to deal with uh, from that perspective. So looking at the, um, the governor's budget, okay, and, and uh, Dan Muser will be on the show talking about, um, you know, the, the inner workings of the lottery and the, and the privatizing of the liquor stores and, and whatever, where that revenue is coming in. Now, you just said there'll be a 3.5% increase, okay? Now, last year, it was also increased. You said it was the largest that we've ever had, considering the fact that everyone tries to lump that uh, stimulus stuff in and Correct. saying it's not okay. <laughs> uh, once you take the stimulus, which was a windfall, put it together, the, you still got more money than we ever had before. Now we're getting more right. on top we of it. Okay. All right, so <clears throat> when they look at the governor, and I'll have him on the show as well, the governor, 
Uh, I want to wait, though, until things settle down a little bit before I bring Tom, uh, Governor Corbett, on the show. The, well, are you satisfied what, what is happening now with the governor's budget, you know, what you see? There are, there's good and bad that, that come with it. Um, one of the things, uh, Pat Ward was in the paper today commenting on URS, and URS deals with um, some of our mentally challenged, mentally disabled, physically disabled individuals that live here in our community, and they're adults, and it allows them to work. And I visited that facility, and I actually had some misconceptions about that facility before I went there. Uh, but that's their lives, and that is something that I'm fighting for for them because they, they came up to me and they begged me. They said, please don't let this close. Please don't take this away. And just the fact that those adults have somewhere to go during the day helps their aging parents. So we're, we're glad to see that human services actually has an increase because we had some terrible cuts uh, last time, uh, and now we're having an increase. So that's a good part of the budget. Um, some parts of the budget, I mean, they, they shift money around, so you have to look really closely at the, at the money aspects. Um, one of the things that is tied in uh, that's very controversial is lifting that cap on the gas tax um, because it's a, it's a cap that is eventually, you know, I'm going to have to look at how is that going to affect the consumer. You know, they're saying if it goes up 30 cents a gallon, is that even something that we can deal with um, at the pump? So in the budget... The only the good thing that I can say about the budget is here we, we are in a point of economic crisis. We have four billion dollars worth of um, un, unfunded pensions that are a huge problem, uh, and and we are not in a good place still when it comes to uh, the money situation in Pennsylvania and in the United States. So you either have to raise taxes, you have to cut back, uh, or you have to have fees when there's services. So the gas the lifting of that cap is actually that you're allowing there to be fees for that's, you know, something that you're using, which is gasoline. Um, so that goes towards transportation. And if you don't adequately fund transportation, then it goes all around in a cycle where, you know, you don't have good roads. Well, then can do isn't going to be able to get uh, big industry in industries to come in here with better and better jobs. So... You know, it, 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 it's, it's, it's a catch-22 situation no matter what you're looking at, all right? Because you have to have the incomes coming in. Um, and so when we look at revenues, right, uh, and I've asked Dan, I'm sure, will be able to give us a better uh, understanding where the revenues are coming in. Hence, you look at then why is the governor considering selling the lottery, okay? Right. Hence, you look and see why he wants to privatize the liquor stores. In the, he, from what he, I understand, there'll be more money generated. But as Brian Rich said on this show, okay, the pension program, uh, the pension uh, is going to be a very serious matter, and we're paying the price for that. Folks, I'm talking to Tara Tuhill, uh, representative of the 116th Pennsylvania Legislative District. We come back, let's find a little bit more about what really the lottery and the um, liquor stores and the self-interest uh, people that are only concerned about certain things and not looking at the broad picture. Uh, and that's the thing. And what's happening with coal, folks? And uh, our president just loves fossil fuels, doesn't he? Uh, we'll be back right after this. Welcome back to the Sam Mosan Show, folks. And thank you so much uh, for all of the viewers in the... Um, uh, Schuylkill County, and now we're uh, into the Wilkesbury Kingston Mountaintop area, folks. Uh, so we welcome you as well, 24/7. Uh, Many of you have been calling, who are seeing these shows for the first time. All of our shows are on our website. Every show that I've ever done, uh, including with Tara, and uh, you know, all of the politicians are up there. YouTube also has them uh, to get informed. I, I really want you to get informed, folks, of what's going on. I know there's a lot, a lot to understand, but who's telling the truth? Who is, um, you know, telling, uh, you know, just to uh, persuade you and, you know, the same old bull. Uh, Tara has always been here. And um, Tara, I appreciate you coming on the show. I know you're busy. But I think it's important for the viewers to understand what's going on. You have this circle here I said about, you know, you have revenue and you have, exp you know, uh, revenue and spending. Uh, any household lives with it every day. You know, I mean, the, the state is no different than a household. If you're making fifty thousand dollars, you're spending. But if you get if you get cut ten thousand dollars, you can't spend fifty. Some people feel you can spend the fifty. I'm on the board of URS. 
I know exactly how important it is, uh, why it is so important to maintain that and fund that. And I'm hoping that, you know, uh, with your input, you know, we could do that. Now, speaking of input, you have the state of Pennsylvania. Our needs are a lot different than Pittsburgh and Philadelphia and York and Harrisburg, okay? So where, where do you get the opportunity, Kara, of going in there and being able to put your input in to get a part of that particular uh, uh, revenue? Well, when you look at, I mean, I look at people that get funding. So URS, they have state funding um, through the Department of Public Welfare. So you have to look at um, health and human services, how they're getting funded. With education, you can look at the Hazleton Area School District, and what I've done in the past is I've been able to argue for more funding than was ever even a proposed by the governor just by going over all the special circumstances that we have. So... Um, obviously, we have a, a, an aging population. We have a lot of infrastructure that needs expansion from a transportation aspect. Um, and that will all aid in um, economic development and bringing businesses here. Um, workforce development is something that you want to invest in. Um, and that was something in the budget, and I'm getting clarification on that, but it was something listed, um, you know, hiring and job training. That was cut. It was a, a zero, zero for the amount that was getting funded to that. And that's certainly something in this area. People need job training. Um, you know, one thing that I take issue with is uh, for higher ed, you have Penn State and Temple, and those are wonderful schools. They're wonderful uh, places to send your children, but they get all of those higher ed facilities starting about 10 years ago, all of those schools started getting about $600 million. And every year they get an increase. Every year they get more and more state funding. So you look at $600 million going to higher ed, uh, but yet Temple and Penn State, every year they increase their tuition. So I want to know the numbers. I want to know what are their professors getting paid? What are their retirements? You know, how many people are on sabbatical? Because how can we as a state justify giving you more money if you're just going to raise the cost of tuition? Because you look at all the kids that are here at Hazleton Area High School, they're going to go like sign their life away, $40,000 a year in a student loan uh, to go to these places. And we're we're not justifying why are we allowing them to increase the cost of that education. Well, well good luck with that, uh, getting the numbers. If you recall, going back many years ago, I was hammering the lottery and saying they're doing this and this, and yeah. I, I got a lot of nonsense. The only person ever came on the show was really honest with us, and later on, cleared it was Dan Muser, okay? Mm -hmm. And that's why I respect him, uh, Dan Muser, because he calls it the way it is. Uh, now, if I was always indicating, well, well, all right, senior citizen, what are they getting? Well, blah, blah, blah. Now, if you notice in the last two years, they're advertising as to where the money is going. Right. Uh, and I want to say I, I've been a, I was a very strong advocate in, in having that started. You were. Getting with the numbers, okay, and, and that's it. So as a state representative, all right, um, and, and representing people who put you in office, you run for office, you say, I'm going to do this, this, and this, and this, and people say, okay, fine, we're going to vote for you. Then you do that. Corbett was, uh, was the same way. He ran and said, we have some serious problems. If we don't bring businesses in, if we don't uh, have a jobs, okay, where are we at? All right. right? It's that vicious circle. So staying with that, uh, looking at the lottery, there's a lot of, you know, you know, you have the strong opposition, and then you have the people who say we should sell the lottery. What's your position on that? Well, the, technically, it's actually a lease. So it's a 10-year lease of the <clears throat> management of the lottery. So I think there's a lot of confusion because you know there's the proposal by the governor to sell the liquor stores and that was being confused with this lease, leasing out of the management of the lottery. Uh, the numbers for the leasing out of the lottery, uh, they are good numbers because it's billions of dollars worth of revenue uh, that they are going to put uh, towards seniors. So that's something that you look at and you're like, well... That's that's pretty that's hard to say no to. Yeah. So and words, at a time where we can't find revenue anywhere, okay. you know, we're looking under a rock yeah, trying right, to find right. revenue. And and so get, get, looking at it as a business person, okay, you know what the lottery is bringing in right now, and you have a history of that. Correct right. me if I'm wrong. Right. Now you have a, a company coming in, and I, I'm not familiar with the company, but however, you research that company and says, look, we can now give you this. Well, if you're making X percent here, two X percent is here, and you look at what you could what you could sell it for, and you're making double that. Right. Da. Right. 
And that's and that is Secretary Muser. He's from the Northeast. He uh, was was the owner of Pride Mo Mobility. Um, you know, he started that business in the basement with his brother, and it's a multi multi million dollar company. So that's what people were asking for. They were like, "We're sick of this govern. We're sick of you know the government and just like bleeding and you know not." making any money and spending money everywhere. So he's taken this, and I know he's putting a lot of thought into this proposal. I know that Dan is obviously behind the numbers, so it does make sense. I think it just came as a surprise. Um, I would have liked it to see it go to a Pennsylvania company. Can't a Pennsylvania company manage it? Um, so there's, there, it, and that's actually before the courts right now. So that's something that not everyone's agreed to. Mm -hmm. The treasurer, so, so, the attorney okay. general. So now let's get to politics, okay, which sometimes good politicians make for good government, but then you have the selfish interest, okay? You have the staunch liberals who are, no matter what happens, we, we want power back, okay? Right. You saw what happened in your election, okay? How they did everything they possibly could to disgrace you because they want the power. Yeah. They want, the Democrats want that power back because they don't care who they're going to destroy in the process. And also, it works for Republicans as well. So right. oh, I'm yeah. not only saying yeah. Democrats. If it was so, and I think that's where people want to throw up when they see the politicians and saying they promised me this and promised me that. When you look at the lottery and you look at it carefully, and that's why I'm hope that bringing politicians like you on to explain that, Tara. Looking at your your northeastern Pennsylvania, you have you you know as a state representative, you have Jerry Knowles, you have Senator Yudichak, you have um, Senator Argo. You have Congressman Barletta, you have Congressman Cartwright, and you have the, the, a group of, of politicians who should be looking at the general good of northeastern and central Pennsylvania, right. working together as you are doing with Yadichak. And we have oh, been, really. It's fabulous, yeah. okay? And, I mean, you put these things aside and you're... Look at what has been accomplished by you working with those people. And just uh, in two short years. It's yes. only been two short years. So. so looking at that, okay, we have an issue here with coal, all right? Mm -hmm. We know the president hates coal. We know he's doing everything he possible to destroy the coal industry. Right. My opinion, okay, uh, what a disgrace. But I don't see and I don't hear, and I'm going to ask Congressman Cartwright, okay, I've already asked Barletta this, uh, Casey, I don't know where he is. I can never get the guy. I mean, you know, once in a while he pops up and we see him, you know, at the job court and he's doing all the, but I don't even know, who, what, what, I can't get to the guy. Um, with that being said, I do respect his family, but I have concerns about him, you know, at least explain what's going on. Don't we work together to try to pro promote the coal and, and people who are in, in this industry? And I think we have to. I mean, obviously we have such a rich coal history. There's still coal here. Um, you, you know, anthracite is one of the best types of coal, you know, if you want to scale it against bituminous coal out, out west. Yeah. Uh, so we have anthracite here. We have, obviously, natural gas here. I look at it from a national security perspective because why are we going to burn for, for foreign oil? You know, I burned it here on the way in my car to get here, um, and we're so we're so subsistent upon foreign oil and dependent upon it. And it really is sick uh, when you look at it because we that's how we operate and we're putting ourselves at a national security I heard you. Issue. Uh, I heard you on the phone coming in here and I said to you, I, I, I applaud you. Because, <laughs> I mean, you're, it's common sense. You know, where is the outcry from Senator Casey? Where is the outcry from Cartwright, Barletta? I mean, maybe they are. And they're allowing this guy. And it's okay. new standard yeah. after new standard. Yeah, and, I mean, how much can John Rich is trying for since 1997, 98. To, we would have had liquefaction plants here. We would have had maybe 10, 15. Our gas prices would have been maybe 150, 125, or oil prices would be down. The government just says thumbs or nose at all these people. And okay? it's jobs. We're allowing the president of the United States to destroy the coal industry that costs thousands of dollars, thousands of jobs. And you know what? People are saying, well, he's our president, and, you know, I voted for him, and, he, and it's all Bush's fault. Right. Folks, I'm talking to Tara Toolhill. I'm the one that gets upset here, not the politicians. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Sam Sancho, folks. Uh, if I could calm down a little bit. Uh, well, my guest is Tara Toolhill. I get very upset. You know why? Because I see all these senior citizens who worked all their lives, Tara. Uh, they're struggling out there, and then you see the abuse of the ask access cards, where they're, you know, their people are thumbing their nose at people who are working hard, and then they're, rib and they're, and they're it's uh, still going on. Yeah, it's still going on. No, no accountability. Of what's going on? I say help people. We've talked about this before. I know you're on top of it. Jerry Knowles is on top of it. Is anything being done? We have taxes going up. 
Uh, he, uh, the president sold us a big bill of goods with Obamacare, uh, and everyone thinks it's the greatest thing, and their taxes have gone up already. It's a big tax program. Federal taxes are going up. Seniors are getting clobbered all the time. I, and and it, just, it just drives me crazy. And people say, why do you pick on the president? Because I pick on him because, to me, what he's doing, especially with Planned Parenthood killing babies, that's another story. Now the taxes are going through the roof. Obamacare is a big tax thing, okay? Seniors are going to get else screwed when they get sick, okay? And people just don't believe that. But and it was orchestrated so well since, you know, he was able to get reelected, and now you're going to see it affecting your wallets uh, with the, you know, some families $3,000 that they're going to be paying more in taxes this year. Uh, so we're trying to stop that. You know, that's how the federal government, uh, that's what's happening. Those are the repercussions of the Affordable Air Care Act. Uh, but in Pennsylvania, we have to hold the line. We don't want to increase taxes uh, on, on families because they're already getting it at the federal level. So you do have to make tough cuts, uh, and, and we do have to stimulate the economy. We have to put into transportation so that we can have better jobs here. Uh, we have to, you know, be able to bring jobs to Pennsylvania so that people can start to Well, subsist. I think the governor is, is doing this, and what's happening is he's, he's, he's paying the price for what the, what the federal government's doing right now. They're, we're getting wrapped with all these taxes and more to come, okay? Uh, and uh, here again, when, when someone tells me uh, that it's always Bush's fault, you know, it's, uh, it, it, you know get, a, get a life, will you? Get a life and understand what's going on. Uh, and, and it is a result of having kicked the can down the road. Of course. All these years yep. spending, borrowing, uh, you know, all the government waste. Mm -hmm. So now we, we did elect the governor so that he would <laughs> change things in Pennsylvania. It's just extremely unpleasant. So, you know, his popularity well, and, and is And the liberal press is clobbering, okay, because they, yeah, it is. Well, it is because of the fact that he's doing his job. You see, it's like a, a father comes in and says, okay, no kids, you can't have that allowance anymore, and you can't do this and you can't do that. You think the parents are going to be popular? Right. Okay. But to save their household, they have to do that, okay? Uh, I'm not giving them a, a free, a free uh, yeah. ride here, Tara, but the point is, come on, let's be realistic, and particularly the seniors are getting wrapped. All right, get to my the point where I see all the senior citizens, their hearts break, when they go to the grocery store, they're hard, uh, and, and they're paying the fuel. Some of them, I don't know how they're existing. I really mean that. What are you doing about the abuse with access cards? One of the biggest things was an asset test. Uh, you can't be driving a Lexus and still be on welfare. And that's what we have everywhere. That's what we get all the complaints for. Um, and when they tried to have an asset test, um, the, the Democrats on the Democratic side just went absolutely nuts. Um, well, you know, why, sure they, they would go nuts. They and, want the votes. Right. And, and that's, you know, we haven't been able to have an asset test. But we have to continue working on that issue because it is so unfair that, you know, our seniors are scrounging by to get by, driving their old car that they retired with, and then you have a whole generation of people that are just on the government dime. And, and that's the reality of it. And there's no accountability whatsoever. Uh, and that's an issue I've been working on since I came into office, and there's still no accountability. Statewide, God only knows, because we see what goes on in our district. It, it, is, it is beyond, it's just so sad that the entitlements that this guy, the president, wants to give all these entitlements to everybody, just give them away. The Democrats love it because they're voting for the Democrats. And if it was Republicans, I'd say the same thing, but power is, is killing this country. The poor people that have worked in this country so hard are getting slammed. Yeah. And you know what? Our politicians, our U.S. senators, our U.S. congressmen, okay, should be out there fighting for them. Some are, such as you, Knowles, even you, John Udichak, who is a Democrat, but I respect John, and he's there for the people. Until we realize in this country, until the people realize what they're doing to us, okay, and make people accountable like right. you, uh, Tara, we're going to just go further, further down the tubes. Well, the good thing is I've learned a lot in the last two years, uh, so I'm, you know, more informed on all of the issues, and there is so much work to be done, and so much, you know, I have a lot of fight in me, so I, there's a lot that I'm fighting for. Well, Tara, here's I'm what we're going to do. do it. I know I'm running over, Andy's going crazy. Um, uh, here's what we're going to do, okay? I'm going to ask, uh, I'm going to have a, um, I'm planning, a, I don't want to let my, cards out because the competition will jump on me immediately because if we do something the next day they're doing the same thing. Um, but I have something planned where I'm going to bring a lot of things together, all right, and there'll be a lot of major accountability going on because I've like had it, 
like Booty Bill Trammy has had it and we've yeah. had it with, with the abuse that's happening. I appreciate you coming on the show. And I always appreciate the fact that you do respond. I know you're busy, not immediately, but you do respond to our news department. I appreciate that. Folks, uh, Representative Tara Toohill, we have a lot more coming on. I have Matt Cartwright coming on the show. I have Dan Muser coming on the show. We have the governor coming on the show uh, just to find out what's going on. Stay with us uh, on 24-7, our website, and we'll see you next time.